These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, well, first of all, what's the name of this content? Right. You need to memorize this one. So seven, uh, I believe, would be hept. Hept, yeah. So this would be heptane. Give a name to this compound. Um, can it just be one, two, four, um, four propyl heptane? How did you get the heptane? Oh, never mind. It's not seven, it's eight, so um, octane. Okay. Are you starting the numbering from the left or the right? From the left. And how do you know that that's better than starting it from the right? Because it's closer to the left. The suspicion. It's always a good idea to actually put in your numbers with the parent chain. So the substituent here has three carbons, so that would be four propyl octane. Okay. Now we need to give a name to this compound. Well, the first thing we have to do is find the parent chain. That's going to be the longest possible chain. So what should our parent chain be? How long would that be? straight across or going across and then up and then to the right? Or I maybe Oh yeah, it could be right. I didn't want to do that though. <laughs> so uh, let's try this instead. Okay. So it'll just be the parent and chain will be a non name and it'll be the line across the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Because if we do the other possibility, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be shorter. Should we start the numbering from the left or from the right? Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, in this case, it doesn't matter. But it's a really good idea to not be lazy and actually write down those numbers. You should actually write down those numbers. And then, now we have to name the substituent. Now the complicated thing is that this is a branched substituent. That means this is a substituent that has another substituent on it. So in a sense, we have to do this all over again. First of all, we have to kind of pick the parent substituent. That is, which part of the substituent is the main part of the substituent? Well, again, we want to pick the longest possible substituent to be the main part. So should we follow the substituent to the left or to the right? To the right. Because that would give us a three carbon chain, whereas to the uh, to the left would only be a one carbon chain. So let's see here, we're working on the number five carbon. All right, um, and now I'll put in some numbers here. Um, so you can call these one, two, and three. Uh, maybe I'll put in some primes here just to show, I don't know if that's standard, but that's just a way to show this is a substituent and not the main chain. 
Okay, so um, what would be a good name for the, the, the main part of the substituent? Propyl. Good. And it's good you didn't say propane, you said propyl. When you're naming the parent, you just use a. But when you're naming a substituent, you use o. So it's good that you thought about that. So that would be propyl for that part of the substituent. Now we need to name the substituent that's on the substituent. Well, here's that substituent that's on there. Um, how many carbons are there on that substituent on the substituent? One. Yeah, and what's the name for that? Methyl. Methyl. Now we need to say where the methyl group is, because theoretically it could have been here, yeah. but it's here instead. So we need to number the substituent. Now the rule for numbering the substituent is that the number one carbon in the substituent is always the carbon that is connected to the parent chain. That's very important to have in your notes. The number one carbon in the substituent is always the carbon that's connected to the parent chain. That's a totally different rule than we use for figuring out the number one carbon in the parent chain. Uh, how do we figure out the number one carbon in the parent chain? Well, we try to um, number from the side that will give us the lowest possible numbers for our substituents. But there's a completely different method for numbering a, finding the number one carbon on the substituent, that one will always be the carbon that's directly connected to the main chain. Um, so this has to be the number one carbon. Not because it has a substituent on it, but because it's directly connected to the main chain. Okay. Now, then what should I say? By the way, these numbers could be called locators. We can call these numbers locators because they tell us the location of different chains. So what should be the locator for the methyl group? Five. Oh, for the methyl group, one. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't put in these primes because it's not one prime. I just made up that prime thing to yeah. distinguish this from the, the parent chain. It's just called number one because it's on the number one carbon on here. All right, but now we have a, uh, a difficulty which is that we have two different types of numbers. We have some numbers that are locators on the main chain and we have some numbers that are locators on the substituents. And it would be nice if there was some quick way to tell the difference in the name between the numbers that are the locators on the main chain and the ones that are locators on the substituents. Well, the trick that the chemists use is that if you have a number that refers to a location on, on a substituent, you put that in parentheses. And now we can see at a glance, this must refer to a location on the main chain because it's not in parentheses. And this must refer to a location on the substituent because it is in parentheses. So this is when you need parentheses. When you need parentheses, when you need to put in locators that refer, the, refer to carbons in the, inside the substituent. That's why you usually don't need these because you usually don't have branch substituents. And the convention is you don't just put this around the number one. You put it around the entire substituent that it's referring to. So you can see that the left parenthesis is here, but the right parenthesis goes all the way over here because this is when we got finished naming that branch substituent. So when do you need to put the substituent in parentheses when it has a number that refers to a carbon on that substituent? Make any sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So what if five had like, if the five carbon on the parent chain, what if it had another like branch substitu substituent? You know, like, and- Good question. Well, let's start with this. Okay. How would we name this? Um, well, it would have all that, but then it would also have a ethyl group. So, so that would be outside of the parentheses, though. Yep. So what would the full name be then? So would it be 5-ethyl, comma, 5-1-methylpropyl? Close. We only need commas when we have two numbers that need to be separated from each other. You use commas to separate one number from another number. If you need to separate a number from a letter, you use a dash. So all we have to do here is separate numbers from letters or a number from a parenthesis. So we don't need any commas, we just use dashes. Basically, we're just treating these like two separate substituents. This one just happens to be a little bit more of a complicated substituent than usual, but we have two substituents on the number five carbon. There's an ethyl group and this. Why did you list this first? Well, using alphabetical order, ethyl comes before methylpropyl in alphabetical order. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. 